Today on the channel, I wrote a book. In today's video, I'm going to tell everything about the process. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! to the channel for something entirely different today as today hey i wrote a book and we're going to explain exactly how the sausage is made what it took to make this book when i decided to do this book what my thought process was with this book and i'm going to be open and honest what are the profits from a book like this i got nothing to hide and we'll talk about it all right here in this very video and we'll even answer some q a questions that came from patreon members of course patreon link in the description down below best way to support a channel like this you get all kinds of bonus content over there giveaways you name it and march's giveaway where we're filming this right now i am going to give away one of these soft cover editions of this book for the march patreon winner so if you want to try to get that check out the patreon down below in the link of course in the description down below i should say but like I said, I'm going to explain how the sausage is made. I'm going to describe this book, all the kind of stuff about this book and what it did take. However, should probably plug the book and where to get it. Of course, you can go to Amazon.com. We all know Amazon. Search in Jack's Classic Superstars book. Search in my name. You will find the book. But however, Amazon will only have the soft cover edition. If you want to go to Barnes & Noble... Barnes & Noble will have the hardcover edition. It's the exclusive variant, I guess is what it is. It's an exclusive at this point over on Barnes & Noble for the hardcover. Soft cover available over there, but full transparency. If you're going to buy the soft cover, get it at Amazon. It's a lot cheaper on Amazon than Barnes & Noble. Sorry, Barnes & Noble. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, as one may say. So hardcover, that's a Barnes & Noble thing. Soft cover, Amazon, that's my recommendations to you. A lot of people are saying, Kyle, where's the PDF file? Where's the uh, Kindle edition? Things like that. I don't know, maybe in a couple of years, it just takes one person to screen grab all that, send them out to everybody, and then there it is. So not really interested in that. A book like this, I could see that happening very easily, maybe in the future. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what happens there. But uh, let's talk about it. So Amazon.com, softcover edition, Barnes & Noble, hardcover and softcover edition. Either way, of course, you can get your book right there. Obviously, I'm biased. I love the hardcover edition. However, the hardcover edition is a very expensive book, as you can imagine, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. But first, let's talk about how this book came to be. How did this book come to be? Well, you guys know, for, what, three years now, every single Tuesday, maybe even four years at this point, we've been doing a Jack's Class Superstars video every single Tuesday on the channel, going through my entire collection. Now, we've been doing these videos, like I said, for three years. Patreon members, you have five years of stuff. I think the final video will drop on traditional YouTube the last week of December 2025. That's how far ahead I am on those videos for Patreon members right now. So if you want to get ahead on those, Patreon's the place to be. But they drop every single Tuesday. So obviously, I'm passionate. Obviously, I'm having a lot of fun with these Jax Class Superstars. But along the way, I said to myself, you know what? I got a mint on card collection. I would really love to have a loose collection of Jack's Classic Superstars, which made the mind start spinning. I started looking for deals, and you know me, I got to get a deal all day long. And what I said to myself was, it would be great to just piece these through on eBay, Mercari, Facebook groups. You know, you buy two or three here. However, you're going to be killed with shipping. So what I said to myself is, you know what? I need to look for huge bundles. And about a week into that search, a guy in Chicago, Scott Cocody, shout out to Scott, I think I said his name right, uh, Scott out there had the entire collection for sale. And I said, oh my gosh, this is going to be good. Chicago's about a five hour drive for me, it's definitely doable. And I said, if I can get everything at one spin, one time, uh, that's going to save me a heck of a lot of money in shipping and things like that. So we did come to an agreement. Good friend of the channel, David C. Anderson and I, we rented a van. He had a nice discount for a van to rent. And we made the trip to Chicago. We picked up these figures and we were off to the races from there. It was a monumental purchase. It felt a little squeamish uh, trying to pay for that all at once. as It's not cheap to buy an entire collection, as you can imagine. And that's one people things, one thing thing people say to me a lot is, Kyle, how did you afford that mint on card collection? Well, 
Guess what? I collected from day one of the line. So I was buying them at Kmart, Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, KB Toys, as they came out. So it wasn't very expensive for a lot of that stuff to buy. However, the second collection, a little bit more expensive. But when you buy that big of a collection, you definitely get a deal. You got to get a deal out there. So there it was. I said, hey, here's my loose collection right here. I'll have them in on card and loose. Well, I started doing unboxings, of course, as I was working towards the loose collection. Said, hey, I might as well do unboxings for the channel. Makes all the sense of the world. And I said to myself, you know what? There's a lot of books out there. There's Star Wars guidebooks. Pixel Dan's got a He-Man guidebook out there. Um, there's wrestling ones. LJN, Hasbro. There's a lot of different guidebooks for toy lines. There isn't one for Jack's Classic Superstars. And I really sat myself down in front of a mirror. And I just did one of these in front of the mirror. I said, Kyle, if you don't do this, who will? Is there anybody else that would step up to the plate and do this? Is there anybody else that has the double up collection like that? I don't know. Probably somewhere along the way somebody does, but maybe they don't want to write a book. I don't know. But I said, you know what? I feel like this is a th something I could very easily do. This is something I would love to tackle. I'm passionate about this line. I think those that watch this channel regularly know I'm passionate about this line, and I think it would be a fun thing. And it's one of those things, too. It's like all about uh, history, but it's also about leaving your mark on something, I guess. And I guess that's kind of what YouTube is. One cool thing about doing these YouTube videos every single day for me is I know, you know, I'm not going to live forever. I could be hit by a bus uh, as I walk out of my house. You never know what might happen out there. But it's pretty cool that my daughters, I have two young daughters as most know, they could just dial up a video. And let me tell you, I got a few videos out there on YouTube. They could dial up a different video every single day, and it's kind of like I'm still around. Uh, that's something that's pretty cool, and that's something I don't think a lot of other generations do have. So a legacy is an important thing, I guess. It's not just for Randy Orton, Teddy Biasi Jr., and Cody Rhodes anymore at the end of the day. But there is a legacy here, and there's a legacy writing a book like this. Because for good or bad, I guess it depends where you guys sit. You guys know I sit right here at this very table. I will forever be kind of... Uh, uh, put with the Jack's Classic Superstars toy line. Of course, you'll always think of Jeremy Power. You'll think of the WWE. You'll think of the wrestlers there. But a lot of people going forward will say they search Jack's Classic Superstars. This book will come up. My YouTube channel videos for the last five years or five years by the time it's all said and done covering this line will come up. There's a bit of a legacy right there, which I think is pretty cool. It is a toy line that is very special to me. Like I said in the foreword of this book, the reason why I don't think all of this would be possible without this line coming to my life. So there's a lot of meaning behind this one. So that was one reason I really wanted to do the book. The other one, it was all about the money. No, it wasn't about the money because I knew right off the bat there wasn't going to be any money in this for me as an author. You want to believe you're going to be Stephen King and the millions of dollars are going to be rolling in. It's just not possible on something like this. I mean, anything is truly possible, but you got to put that business hat on, even on your own stuff. That's the hardest thing to put a business hat on is when you're doing your own things. You got to have belief, you got to have passion, but you got to be realistic as well. And this started from day one as a labor of love. It was not about the money. It couldn't be about the money because just like everything YouTube related here, it's not going to ever uh, sustain itself. It's always a losing proposition or whatever you want to call it. It's about the fun. It's about the passion. That's what it's about here. So the idea came across that, you know what, I could do a book like this. And I said, okay, how do I want to do this? So I started thinking uh, about formats. I started the process. How would I want this to be laid out? So I kind of sketched it down on a piece of paper. Probably should have saved that piece of paper. Could have put it in the book, maybe. Who knows? Uh, but I had an out idea for an outline, and it's a pretty simple outline. If you see the book, it's a pretty simple process. This isn't War and Peace. This isn't some uh, great story or something. This is a guidebook. So Guidebooks are pretty easy. It's an encyclopedia of a toy line, basically. So it's not like I uh, invented the wheel or something, but it is. A, I had an idea, and you have to have an idea of what you want, how you want it to flow, what you want it to be like, what you want to include, and I think there's a lot of surprises in this book. And I knew also along the way, there's a lot of stuff for somebody that collected the line since day one that was with the ebbs and flows and stuff like that. I think there were some things that if I once again got hit by a bus, some things would be lost forever that nobody would ever know because I think I'm the only one talking about some of these things. Some of these weird variants and some of these every other case experiences of some of these figures. Uh, some of the different things that went on with the line around the time throughout the years. There's a lot of that stuff in the book that I think would be lost to time if I didn't put it in the book. So that was something also I wanted to make sure that was always preserved one way or another. So that was fun. So I had an idea, had an idea for the book, and I knew from day one there was one person I definitely wanted to have involved, and that was Jeremy Padauer, the godfather, of course, of the classic Superstars book. So about two months, let's give or take, 
2023, let's call it April or May, about a year ago right now, I started putting together, okay, here's the format, here's what I'm going to include. I kind of penciled it all out. Actually, I put it on Microsoft Word of all technological things out there. Put it in Microsoft Word, kind of had the flow, kind of had the thing, had the list, had to know, okay, is there anything I'm missing that I need to track down? And there was a couple of things I was missing. Okay, an accessory here or there I had knew I had to pick up. But one thing I knew I wanted was Jeremy Padauer. I wanted Jeremy Padauer to be at least a little bit involved in this. And I never met Jeremy in my life. And it's always funny. I've talked about this before. Uh, Jeremy is one of those guys that I've admired from a distance for a long time. And a lot of people say, hey, if you could meet anybody, oh, I want to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. I want to meet uh, Ken Griffey Jr., whoever it may be. I want to meet Terry Steinbach. Maybe that's what it is. Well, I, top of my list was always Jeremy Padauer. I love the passion. I love the business hat. I loved his classic superstars line, his time on He-Man. Just a very interesting individual to me for many, many years. And then San Diego Comic-Con 2023 happened. Of course, the stars aligned. Jeremy was there. I was there. We got his attention. Thanks to good friend of the channel, Jeremy Conrad, helped me out get that. And I got about a half hour with Jeremy Con or Jeremy Jeremy Padauer. Get my Jeremy's mixed up. Shout out Jeremy Conrad. I got the uh, Jeremy Padauer to sit down, and we sat there and talked for about a half hour. You guys saw it in my San Diego Comic Con coverage. I put some of that in there. We flagged him down from the crow's nest. And as I expected, I, I like I said, I don't know Jeremy, but I fully expected he would be on board about this because I felt like most people, they love a legacy. And this is Jeremy's legacy, one of his legacies at this point. Uh, and I knew he would be on board, and he was on board from day one. He loved the idea. He was very honored about the idea, like most of us probably would be. If somebody wanted to celebrate your work history, celebrate something you've done in your career, they're going to be pretty happy about that. And Jeremy was. So we talked there for about a half hour. Uh, you know, we follow each other on social media, all that. I already was following him, but he followed me on social media, said, hey, reach out, gave me his phone number, which is pretty cool. I mean, I'm not going to blast Jeremy all day long, but if I needed an emergency to text Jeremy Padauer or call Jeremy Padauer, I could do that now. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not just going to call him. I don't want him to say, Kyle, block this. I'm going to block you. I don't want any of that going on. But it's very cool to say, hey, if I really had a question or needed to reach out to Jeremy, I could do that. That's a pretty cool thing for me. Uh, maybe not for everybody, for me, totally an honor right there. So I wanted Jeremy to be involved, and he said, hey, I'm on board. I'm on board. So we got his number. I said, hey, I'll be in touch with you later this year. I'm going to start working on it. I'd love to have you write the foreword, and I'd love to do a Q&A with you. And I would love if you could send me any kind of things from your personal collection, any pictures, any stuff like that. He did all of that stuff. We had, I think, it was either one or two uh, Zoom meetings where we went through, we did the q and A. I I transcribed it all. We had some discussions. There were some questions on things that have never been officially answered until now that is in this book now about the line. So it was a very good uh, segment there. And then I said, hey, Jeremy, could you write the forward? He wrote the forward for the book as well. And uh, it was just a very cool process getting Jeremy on board on this. And I felt like if you do a book like this, you have to have Jeremy involved in some way. And I'm thankful he agreed to that for me and to help me out with this book. So once again, thank you to Jeremy. He's in here. But that's not the only forward here. Good friend of the channel, musician Jeff George, uh, a good friend of the channel, great friend of the channel. He also wrote the forward to this book as well. So dual forwards or triple forwards with my forward in there. It's just a book of forwards is what it is at the end of the day. But no, I really appreciate Jeff taking the time to write the forward right in the back cover. Uh, very nice of him to do that for me as well. So that was kind of the forward process, getting all that under the uh, radar there, getting all that done, getting the pictures, of course. Uh, there's a picture of me and Jeremy from San Diego Comic-Con. I got pictures of Jeff in there, things like that. It all came together. And then, of course, filming the videos or taking pictures, I guess. I See, I'm thinking YouTube. Taking pictures for the book, that was all in the book as well. Of course, I spent many a late night doing this. I mean, I really hammered these things out. And about the same time, I was filming YouTube videos to put on my channel, put on the Patreon right now. So I was doing a lot of work outside of all the normal YouTube channel stuff. You guys know I film four videos every single day. Well, I film most of them on Sunday, but I release four videos every single day. I am pumping out a lot of content. And then besides that, guess what? Got a wife and kids. You guys know that as well. And I got a very, uh, ex a very uh, what's the word? A very um, busy day job, I guess we'll say. I mean, I'm looking about 50, 60 hours pretty much every single week on that. So when people tell me, man, I do this, I do that, I just don't have time, I don't have much sympathy for people because if you want to do something bad enough, you will find the time. You will do a book like this at midnight to 3 a.m. when you got a 7 a.m. meeting the next day. You will do stuff like that to get the job done. So pro tip out there, there's always time if you want it bad enough. You can always figure it out. 
And I spent a good six months documenting my entire collection, mint on card, the accessories, the loose figures. You've seen all that in there. It was a long process. It was a lot of work, as you can imagine. But once again, it comes back to one thing, a labor of love. So that's exactly what it was right there, a labor of love and a lot of late nights, a lot of tireless nights. And I worked in silence for most of the year. A lot of people were shocked this book was done. When did you find the time? Well, that's exactly how the sausage was made right there. Which leads me to releasing it and how to go to market with a book like this. And there's a lot of different ways you can go. You can go the way I went, the self-publishing way through Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Anybody can do that if you want to do that. Or you can find a publisher. Now, I talked to a few people that wrote some books over the years and got their opinion, got their uh, expert advice, we'll call it, and say, okay, how do I do this? What do you think I do? And me knowing, once again with that business hat, I knew this wasn't going to be an Oprah book. This isn't a Martha Stewart book. This isn't something that Walmart and Target are going to carry. This isn't something for the masses. This is a niche upon a niche upon a niche upon the smallest niche ever, really, at the end of the day. So you got to be open and honest with yourself. Know what you're bringing to the masses. And to get a book deal, almost impossible at something like this, especially a first-time author, uh, even harder there. So... Uh, that was a really big challenge at the beginning, and I would have to cede a lot of money of myself, which I don't want to do. Self-publishing, you put it in there, uh, you've got some work to do, a little bit of funds, but for the most part, it's pretty painless. I could have easily went to a printer, local printer, and said, okay, I want to buy 200 books, what's the cost? Well, the books would be a fortune, and then I'm sitting there with 300 books inside my house. There's a pile of them. I got to find a way to take money from everybody. I got to ship them all, got to pack them all, got to do all that work, and let's be honest. I say if you want to do something bad enough, you'll find time. I don't want to do that in the first place, and I don't have time for that. Time is money at the end of the day. As much as I would love to front the cost of thousands and thousands of dollars for a whole book room in my house and slowly putting those out, I don't have the time. So well, but Amazon, Barnes & Noble, what do they do? They take a big percentage of everything because guess what? They're taking the money. They're shipping it out. They're dealing with returns. Uh, they're doing invoices. They're invoicing me for payment. Um, they're doing all that kind of stuff, and they're bringing it out to the masses, and they're promoting it, so forth, so forth. So had to uh, kind of balance all that kind of stuff together a little bit to decide which way I wanted to go to market. And for me, that's all I could do. There's not, I'm not Stephen King once again. Nobody's going to say, Stephen, when's your next book coming out? I'm not there. Maybe I will be someday. I'm not a business hat, realistic hat. I don't think so. But you never know. Stranger things have happened there. But that being said, hey, if you're a publisher or something, you want to publish this thing, you want to work with me, find me on social media, send a message to me. We'll talk about it. We'll work something out right there if you want to do that. But the book is expensive. And I'm honestly shocked. That was the one thing that came to me was I can't believe how expensive these books are. And I've mentioned it in a few videos as well saying, you know, these books, I think a lot of us are just kind of in disbelief about the cost of many things in this day and age. And I'm pretty realistic on a lot of stuff, but I was surprised how much it costs to even make a book in this day and age. The route I went, I guess very expensive to make a book. And I was about fell over when I saw the cost of this. And let's start with Amazon. Let's start with Amazon. You guys know this is about a 700 page book right here. Amazon could only do soft cover. At the size I wanted to do this book, hard cover out of the question. They couldn't even do a hard cover, which made me say, well, do I make this like a four volume set? Is that what I do? And I said, you know what? I don't think that works for the classic superstars line. It needs to be all together. Now, let's say we do a Mattel book one day. That needs to be broken up in volumes because you're going to be looking at 10,000 pages. So I understand volumes for that, but the classics, it's a big book but I feel it needed to be. So I don't know if the volumes would have worked there. It could have got the price point down, but then you're buying multiple books and you'd be right back where you started. So I said, you know what? We're going to stick here. It's a bummer. I can't do hardcover, but Barnes & Noble will get to that. But Amazon, of course, one of the biggest companies in the world, as we do know, just for them to print this book, this soft cover book, I'm getting, here's the sausage, it's $68 and change to print the book. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't include all the invoicing, all the stuff they have to pay for shipping, all that kind of stuff, and any royalties I get. It's $68 right off the bat right there for the book. I was hoping, yeah, it's a book like this, maybe, I don't know, $39 is what I was thinking. No, you're at $68 just the cost to print it. 
That is crazy. That's sticker shock if there ever was one. Absolutely shocked by that. Absolutely shocked it was so big they couldn't do a hardcover. But that's just the way the sausage is made right here. So I set the price of the book at $99.99. And at $99.99, I bring home a royalty of $5 and change per book. That's how much money I make off of that. All the other money goes to the cost to print the book. Amazon to do the invoicing, shipping, dealing with the returns. And then, of course, the work they have to do to pay me once a month or whenever I end up getting paid for this thing. Who knows? Uh, all that goes into it. So $99.99 is what I had to set the price of the book at. And I'm just like... I just feel people are going to be like, oh, Kyle's ripping everybody off. He's making $40 a book. What's he doing? But you know what? I said, I'm going to be open and honest. I'm always open and honest about what I feel about things. That's what it's going to be right there. I'm going to let everybody know, hey, here it is. I'm making $5 and change at $99. But then I released the book on March 1st and something magical happened. The Amazon gods shining down upon me, they listed the book at $68 and change. They're using it as a loss leader. Will that be permanent? I have no idea. How long it'll last, I have no clue. But we're at $68 right now. If you want to get one, you might want to get it now because it might go up to $99 tomorrow. I have no idea how that works. I am very thankful for Amazon to do that. And they're still paying me my $5 and change per book. So that is a great thing for me. It's a great thing for you if you wanted to buy this. That Amazon's taking the hit, not me or you. That's a good deal right there. So I was very pleased with that. I think that really helped. As you guys saw, you know, the first four days, I was like number one in three different book categories there. And I knew that wouldn't last forever, especially this book being $68. Most of the competition is like nine to $20. So it's an expensive book. It's not for everybody. I get it. I understand it. I know I've heard some people say, I could buy three figures for this. Well, you could also have about a thousand some figures in a book if you wanted to, but you got to do what you want. You got to vote with your own wallet. I totally get it. I understand it. It's not for everybody. Not everybody can afford this. I totally get it, but it is here for everybody if they do want that. So that's Amazon. Only soft cover available right now if you do want it, which leads us to the hardcover. I really wanted a hardcover addition to this one, and Barnes & Noble is the only place to do it. Now, Barnes & Noble is going to do the soft cover as well. Once again, I recommend Amazon, and we'll get into that here in a second. But the hardcover will be, is available on Barnes & Noble. You're looking at about $135 for the book, though. That's just the case. It's $85 and change to print this hardcover book. $85. And then, of course, the same stuff with Amazon. They take their piece. Uh, Barnes & Noble does. They ship it. They invoice it. They track it. They do all that work. So they got to get a piece of that pie as well. And once again, I'm netting out with $5 and change per this hardcover book as well. Now, Got to strongly recommend the hardcover. I'm making the same profits either way, but man, this hardcover, uh, I about cried when it came in. It was such a beautiful book. It's so nice in hardcover. It looks even more official. I mean, this is a heavy, heavy duty book. If somebody hit you with this, you would be knocked out. This is thicker than a phone book right now, as is this one here. But there's something special about a hardcover, especially something you're passionate about, something you love, something you want to have forever. A hardcover edition like this is absolutely amazing. So like I said, it's not going to be for everybody. If 68 bucks isn't for everybody, a hardcover at 135 is not going to be for everybody. And Amazon is doing 68 on the soft cover. Barnes Noble, 115 on the soft cover. So like I said, uh, I'm going to tell you, you got to get a deal all day long. You're going to want to buy that at Amazon. That's just the way it goes. But if you want to support Barnes Noble, you don't like Amazon, hey, you can do that as well. Choose your own book adventure at the end of the day. It's almost like a choose your own adventure books. Oh man, a classic from back in the day. But the hardcover is the way to go. But I understand it. it's very pricey. It's almost double the soft cover. But you do get what you pay for. It is a beautiful book. And of course, I've had a lot of people reach out. Kyle, will you do autograph copies? Of course, I'll autograph this. I'll put whatever you want inside the book. I also, if you buy the book from me, I will uh, have these classic superstars bookmarks here. It's got a little place if you want me to sign it. Got a little picture of me. I do have these that I will throw in if you buy the book from me. But that being said, I got to order the book myself. So I got to have some charges there. So I got to pay for it, ship it to me. Then I got to ship it to you and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not charging an arm and a leg on an already expensive book. But if you want that for whatever reason, I'm more than happy to do that. You know, if something comes along, there's a toy show or a book signing or something, hey, I'm up for anything like that as well if that day does come. You never know. I've had a few offers already. So who knows? You might be seeing me out on some toy show circuits, things like that. But there's a lot that goes into uh, books and autographs and all that whole rigmarole right there. But that's basically how the sausage is made with this book. I mean, it was a labor of love. 
but it is expensive. Now, if I had to do it again, I think I'd do it the same way. There's something special about having this book all together. A different book, like I said, Mattel, I think that works better in volumes. I mean, it just depends how you look at things. I mean, you could have easily done just the singles uh, as a book, the two packs as a book, three packs as a book, exclusives as a book. You could have done that, but there's something special about having it all here together. You guys tell me in the comments, but you never know. There might be more. Who knows? You never know. I almost might have the next book already done. You never know. I might. You never know what might be going on here. Hardest working man on YouTube. Hardest working man in the day job as well. A guy that gets around is what I do here. So that is it. I'm looking at this, looking at a few of my notes I was talking through here. A little bit of rambling, as you can imagine, but it is a passion project for me. It was a lot of fun. It's really cool to see this officially to fruition out in everybody's hands, myself included. You know I'm buying my own books as well. Uh, but like I said, hey, if you're a publisher out there and you want to publish this, you want to do something, hey, let's talk business. I'll always have the conversation uh, at the end of the day. But let's dive into a couple of questions here. A lot of these things I already just answered throughout this video. Uh, but Jack DeFranco asks, how long ago did you come up with the idea for the book on these figures? And how long did it take to put everything together to make it a final product? So uh, roughly a year, a year and change or so. Just uh, roughly a year, let's call it. And then it took me a good... Six to eight months, something like that, to put that together, working at night, going back and forth. And I should mention, good friend of the channel, Johnny Clash. Some may know Johnny Clash. He helped me with a lot of the editing stuff. He's an editing wizard and things like that. So he helped immensely with this book, helping me and uh, any ideas and questions I had and, you know, uploading into these sites and things. I'm no technical genius at the end of the day, so he helped a lot on this. So I'd, I got to make sure I mentioned Johnny Clash in this for all the help he handed here with me. Uh, but yeah, about six to eight months is what it did take me. Uh, Brian Fotheringham already ordered mine. Can't wait to get it. Question, which was more difficult, the writing process or the photography process? Uh, photography is pretty much easy, I thought. I mean, it's just, it's simple pictures. It's not like high art pictures or anything like that. It's just doing the time. It takes the time. You just got to put the work in. Now, the writing, fairly easy because a lot of this is in my head, sitting there just hammering it out. You know, I would put the figure in front of me. I'd talk about it, whatever I wanted to talk about. And uh, then I'd look over figure over, look over the loose one. Did I miss anything? Is there anything special about this? And a lot of the stuff I remembered from, of course, hunting those figures back in the day. So a lot of that stuff came pretty easy. Uh, the writing was probably harder because the photography it was just work. It was just time. Uh, but both of them were very enjoyable. I enjoyed the process on both immensely at the end of the day. Now, continuing on, a couple more questions here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, Tim Merritt, good brother, Tim Merritt, Lando Merritt, as he's known around these parts. How excited was Jeremy when you started to do the book? And when did you tell him or ask him to be involved in the book or asking him about certain figures and so on? So, Right there. I mean, uh, it was at San Diego Comic-Con. That's where we kind of uh, talked it over. And I told him, hey, here's my rough draft. Here's a, a sample picture of what I'm going for. He was on board from the get-go, as I did say. Uh, and it just snowballed from there. And he was on board. I know Jeremy's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. He's a busy guy. I was very thankful he made time for you know a two-hour conference call to go through everything, ask the questions, things like that. Got to give a shout out to Jeremy as well. So it was quite the process, that, that's for sure. But it was one that was definitely rewarding. It was definitely fun and it'll definitely live forever. So there it is. That's my rambling book explanation. If you guys have any questions about the book, feel free to put them in the comments down below. Of course, like I said, Amazon and Barnes & Noble, you can pick these guys up right now. I do appreciate it. And I know some people are going to say, oh, he's making $100 a book. It's not the case. Whether you believe me or not, it is what it is, but I do appreciate everybody that picked up a copy of this. It's a piece of me to piece of you, I guess, at the end of the day. And like I said, you want autographed copies, I got these bookmarks I'll throw in there. Sign whatever you want, whatever you want to do. Reach out to me on social media. But a true labor of love here, and I want to do a video to kind of document the process a little bit for everybody. So there it is, my Jack's Classic Superstars book. Hard cover and soft cover edition. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day and then some. You know how that goes here. And then don't forget every Tuesday, we got those Jazz Classic Superstar videos where we deep dive into all the videos. So make sure you're checking those out. A lot of fun over there. And of course, don't forget about Patreon, your best way to support this very YouTube channel. All kinds of bonus stuff over there every single day. ProWrestlingTees.com, search Kyle Peterson. And of course, the book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, social media, Sir Paul64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So for the Jax Classic Superstars guidebook by yours truly, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.